Well, good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is your pastor, and I have a tremendous word that I want to share with you today. I want to first of all welcome you to worship this morning. It's going to be phenomenal. God has put a real mandate on my heart to speak into your lives today. So I want you to call everybody that you can and invite them to come in and to be a part of this worship experience today. Right now, we're going to go into worship with our amazing, awesome music ministry. And then I'm coming back to share the word of God that God has put on my heart for you today. Let me pray for you before we get started. Father, we thank you today that you are taking this very time in this very medium to minister to the hearts of your people. For some, dear God, this has been a taxing and trying week. Father, I thank you for allowing something to be said, allow some song to be sung, some word to be delivered, dear God, that will pull your people out of depression and heaviness. God, I thank you for allowing the anointing, the oil of hope to be shared upon the hearts of your people today. And God, we will give you the praise, we will give you the glory, and we will give you the honor. Let's go into our worship experience with our awesome music ministry, and then I will be back to share the word that God has given me for you today. We're talking about the Holy Spirit today. So call somebody and tell them they must tune in today. Let's go in, let's be blessed. Give you call. Thank you, Father. Beautiful God, wonderful Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Have your way in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. 
refreshing love and saturate yes, we're asking for the rain God, I thank God for New Home Ministries music ministry. I thank God for our uh, amazing elder, Elder Said, who puts all of this together and has kept us on point even throughout a pandemic. 
It takes a team. I thank God for all of them. And I thank God for you. And you are really the center of God's message today. I was, I was just sitting in my time, my personal time, and uh, the Spirit of God was just really revealing to me that it is imperative that uh, as a shepherd that I bring you, the people of God, back to a focus on the Holy Spirit. Because if we ever needed the Holy Spirit, we need him now. In a season and in a time when everything is changed or everything is changing, when we, when we can, you know, not safely congregate together in a normal fashion, we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that is going to carry you and carry me, carry us through a pandemic. We're getting ready to go into 2021. And realistically, if you're looking and you're listening to the science, it looks like we're going to be uh, in the grips of this thing for a lot of 2021, if not all of it. So what are we to do? I submit to you that the same power that caused Paul and Silas to sing praises at midnight when they were locked down in a prison cell is what you and I will have to lean on. We're going to have to create a focus and an intentional develop an intentional fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that will bring you peace that passes all understanding. The Holy Spirit is the one that can lift you out of the depths of grief. Many of you have lost loved ones. We've lost, when I, and I use that term lost lightly because we've really not lost them. We know where they are, but it's a, it's a terminology that the world understands. Many of our beloved brothers and sisters in new home ministries have transcended. Many of them i have done more funerals in the last eight months than I, I probably did in the last 20 years. How do we survive this? How do we go through this uncertain economic times? Politically, our country is in a mess on the verge of race wars. How do we deal with this? What's the answer? What's the answer? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I stand here today. I'm in Chicago, Illinois. I just had to come and see my baby girl. I hadn't seen her for a year. Just wanted to see her. You know, I, I've, I've not been able to really embrace and hug my mother like I, like I normally would, but I'm at rest. I haven't been able to hug my church family. I haven't been able to, you know, like we do, you know what I mean? Lock up in the room and just love on one another at the altar, but I'm at rest. Why? Why? The Holy Spirit. There are many of you that are viewing this right now who come out of conventional and religious churches and the Holy Spirit is rarely ever taught. He's rarely ever invited to have his way in the midst of the saints. And here's the reality, the Holy Spirit, he is our only hope. In desperate times, the only hope we have is the Holy Spirit. In times like these, we don't need another religious ceremony. We don't need more emotional antics. We need 
an authentic and genuine experience with the Holy Spirit. And so I want to lead all of us today, before I get into the heart of my message, I want to lead all of us today, or at least most of us today, in a prayer of repentance. Because for many of us, we have embraced this season in our emotions and from the perspective of our own power. And as a consequence, we have panicked. We have had nervous breakdowns. As a consequence, we have lived in states of depression far too long because we have not welcomed the Holy Spirit into this season that we're presently in. In times like these, we need the Holy Spirit. If you would turn your Bibles to John chapter 14, and if you want a title for this uh, message today, I guess you could call it the need for the Holy Spirit, the need for the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, it says, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And that term comforter in the Greek is the term paraclete. And it literally translates as one that walks alongside to help. Jesus left the Holy Spirit with us to walk alongside us and to help. But it's a sad reality when we have a divine the divine assistance of God in the person of the Holy Spirit right alongside us to help. And we never embrace him or fellowship with him. Can you imagine that being alongside a person and having everything they need to help them and they never turn to you for help? They run here, they run there, they stress out over this and they stress out over that. And you were assigned to them to help them and they never turn to you for comfort. That's what we've done with the Holy Spirit. And so I, I, I pray today, I repent today on behalf of all of us that we have Holy Spirit we have ignored you. We have overlooked you. We have tried to do things by and in our own power. And so now I ask you to forgive us. Don't be grieved with us, but forgive us for not recognizing you and not leaning and not surrendering and submitting ourselves into your care because you care for us. And you are the one that has been sent alongside to help us. Forgive us now for not soliciting your help and trying to do things in our own power. In Jesus' name. But going back to our text, he says, And I will pray the Father, John 14, 16, and 17, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now, there are three things that I want to share with you today about why we need the Holy Spirit. And I know that some of you, you've been trained that you know, matters concerning the Holy Spirit are denominational. If we're talking about the Holy Spirit, well, you don't, you know, you got to be Church of God in Christ. You got to be holiness. You got to be full gospel Baptist. Bay, let me tell you something. 
you, you are in a time where Joel talked about in, in that day, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy today. There are Catholics that are filled with the Holy Spirit. There are Baptists. In fact, about it, I'm Baptist. There are Baptists that are filled with the Holy Spirit. There are Methodists that are filled with the Holy Spirit, Lutherans that are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was never, you can never box the Holy Spirit into a denomination. The Holy Spirit is like floodwaters. He runs over all boundaries. And you, no matter what your so-called denominational tag is, you need the Holy Spirit. You sitting there and you just as depressed, you're trying to figure out if you even want to live. Babe, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Your entire focus is negative. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the comforter that Jesus talked about leaving that would abide in them, in us forever. You need the Holy Spirit. Three things I want to share with you about why you need the Holy Spirit. Number one, the Holy Spirit gives us assurance that we are the sons of God. Hallelujah. You know, because if, if you don't have that inner assurance, if you don't have that inner and that divine assurance that you are God's child, the world will make you second guess your own salvation. And if you listen to some religious people and these these way out, um, you know, self-centered, self-righteous doctrines, they'll make you believe that there's no way in the world you're the child of God. And there comes a time when you have to. You have to forget about all of these external voices and all of this external stimuli. And you have to be able to go inside and get the internal witness that I am the son of God. Sometimes you go through so much COVID-19. Sometimes God allows so much to happen in the world around you. And sometimes God even allows stuff to happen to you. And you have to have the internal witness that I am God's son. Glory to God. Sometimes God allows you to go through a Job experience where everything that can go wrong does go wrong. Everything that it looked like God blessed you with looks like it just dissipates overnight. And you have to have a witness outside of the conditions or the circumstances that says to you, I'm the son of God. There have been days in my life that it's gotten so dark that I wondered. And then there was that still small voice that Elijah talked about. That registered deep down in my spirit that said, you belong to God. Don't give up. Hold on a little while longer. God's doing some things that you may not understand, but you belong to God when you can't when you cannot understand his hand. You got to trust his nature. You belong to God. He's your father. So the Holy Spirit, we need him because he gives us assurance that we are the sons of God. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans chapter eight. Verses 16 and 17 says the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. The, the spirit capital S beareth witness with our spirit, small spirit, that we are the children of God. There's an internal witness that the Holy Spirit registers within us to make us know that we're saved. That we don't have to follow all of these way out self-righteous doctrines that I'm saved today, I'm lost tomorrow, you know, I got saved this morning, but I fell off this afternoon, so I'm, now I'm lost, I got to get saved again, and you know, I'm gonna be saved overnight, then I'm gonna mess up in the morning, I got to be saved. Man, please, you got to have the internal witness of the Holy Spirit, and then verse 17 of Romans 8 says, and if children then heirs, 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also uh, that we we may be also glorified together. He makes me know that I'm God's child and that I have some benefits that I'm on child support. The Holy Spirit, you need the Holy Spirit and you have to learn to fellowship with him because he will assure you of your position in Christ and that you are the son of God. I don't ever have to sit around wonder, wonder if I'm saved and I'm not perfect. I mess up, you know, I mess up a lot, y'all. You know what I mean? I do. But I don't ever go to sleep. Well, I wonder if I'm saved. If I die tonight, I wonder if I'm going to hell. I ain't going to hell. I'm saved. I have that internal witness. Wow. Hallelujah. I have that internal witness that even when I mess up, the evidence of my salvation is that that internal witness, the Holy Spirit grieves me because when I mess up, I grieve him. And when you grieve the Holy Spirit, he grieves you back. That's an evidence that you've been saved. And then he brings you into what? Repentance, not just being sorry, but turning away from. But he gives me what? Assurance. That I'm the son of God. Oh, I don't care what you say. That man ain't saved. You ain't saved. You ain't saved. You Baptist. You ain't saved. You ain't saved. You can say what you want. <laughs> I'm glad you ain't the one that's writing names in the book. You can say what you want. My record is on high. And I have an internal witness by the Holy Ghost. And all of us need the Holy Ghost because he gives us that assurance that we are the sons of God. And then number two, we need the Holy Spirit because he gives us that in that inner strength. He gives us that inner strength and God knows who hard not to cry right now. God knows I've needed that inner strength. So many people that I love are going through the worst times of their lives. God knows I've needed that inner strength. I don't, I don't do so well, you know. I don't do so well with watching people that I love suffer. I don't do so well. I don't. I, don't, I, I, I do what I have to do, but I don't do so well. I don't process that well. That's just, you know, that's just truth right there. And I've had to deal with more of that. I've had to have more conversations around deathbeds than I'm comfortable with. I've had to, I've had to talk to people who are afraid, locked away in hospitals and, and family and friends can't even be there with them in some cases. And my strength has run out a long time ago. I've been, I've been functioning purely on the strength of the Holy Spirit within for months now. These are the things that people don't understand. They think that pastoring is just standing on a stage or standing in front of a camera and talking to a lot of people. They don't understand that when you pastor a church, that's your family. And, and you, you know, you feel about when you hear me call people mother, I feel about those women like I feel about my own mother. When you hear me call people papa, father, I feel about them like I felt about my own father. And when they suffer, I have to go through it with them. But there's an inner strength that the Holy Spirit brings. Some of you all are there now. When you have to carry the weight of an entire family, you're the one that everybody is looking to. You're the one, you're the strong man. You may be a female, but you're the strong man in your family circle for your mother, your, fa your, your siblings, your children. You become the spiritually, the strong man. Well, you need the Holy Ghost. See, see, we've limited the Holy Spirit to he tamata, I tamata. You're speaking in tongues and that has its value. We'll talk about some of that in Bible studies. But Bay, you need a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You need to know him personally because he brings what? An inner strength that you can't even, you can't even explain or describe. It's just an inner strength that transcends you. <laughs> You know, this is God. You know, it's not you. I remember when my father passed and transcended. That uh, the morning he passed, it was on a Thursday morning. I never will forget it. 
and Bible study was happening that night. And I heard the, the voice of my father. I heard his words ringing in my spirit. And my, my father would always say, you got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. Life does not stop because somebody dies. You got to keep moving. Ministry has to go on. And I said to my brother and my mother, I said, I'm going out tonight. My brother said, I'm going to go with you. And I taught Bible study that night. I cried for a little while. But then I taught Bible study like things were, were absolutely normal. That wasn't by my own power. That was the inner strength that the Holy Spirit brings. When you learn, when you're wise enough to surrender to him. And some of you are there now. Your little strength has run out and you're pulling your hair out. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm alongside. You need a jump. <laughs> You need a jump. Let me jump you with the power that I bring. He gives an inner strength in Ephesians chapter three, verses 16 and 17. It says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, but, but be what strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. My prayer for you today is that the Holy Spirit will strengthen you with might in your inner man. That even though all of this stuff is caving in on you. And the devil has lied to you and told you that you're not going to be able to make it. You're going under. You are not going under because the Holy Spirit is strengthening you with might in your inner man today. In the name of Jesus. And then thirdly and finally, lest I keep you too long, the Holy Spirit. You need him. Because not only does he give you assurance of your sonship, not only does he strengthen you in the inner man, but thirdly, the Holy Spirit produces peace and joy. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises at midnight and the prisoners heard them. And while they were praising God, something got to rumbling and everyone's bands were loose. Well, what produced that joy? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And joy is not always necessarily grinning, but joy is the supernatural power of God to maintain emotional balance based on my spiritual foundation. That I can always look at a situation and I can see Job operated in joy. We joy is not necessarily emotional, but joy is an inner conviction that everything's going to work out. I don't need to lose my mind. I don't need to throw in no towel. Everything's going to work out and I'm going to hold on until my change comes. Listen to what Romans 14, 17 says for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my joy, y'all. I don't understand. I really don't. I don't know. I don't have no answers. People think that you're supposed to have. I don't have no answers, but I have a witness. I don't have any answers, but I have a witness. And there's a joy that's in my spirit. There's a peace that's in my soul that makes me calm, makes me relaxed. And watch this. I ain't faking this smile. I, I'm not faking this smile. I, I can be in the middle of a storm and I still have this smile because the joy of the Lord is my strength. You need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit brings joy and peace and it'll flow out of you, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Now, I feel that anointing now. <laughs> I feel that anointing now. I feel that anointing now. And even there in your house, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, on your back porch, on your front porch, wherever you're on your job, the anointing of the Holy Spirit flows to you. 
in the name of Jesus, the anointing of the Holy Spirit flows to you today. And the Lord allow the spirit of revival. You've been needing a fresh touch from God. Well, I I'm here to tell you now that that touch you've been needing for months, it's there, right there with you now. You've been, you've been waiting on to get in the building, but babe, let me tell you something. The presence of God is right there where you are now. The Holy Spirit is right there where you are now. If I can get you to just say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. There's something that's going to shift in your life right there in your space. In the name of Jesus. Well, I feel it. I feel, I'm in this hotel right now. But this hotel has become the sanctuary of the living God. I know somebody else in another room saying, man, I don't know. Something different. Something different today. I don't know what it is. I know who it is. I know who he is. He's the Holy Spirit. And may I come to tell you today. Right there alongside, and not only alongside you, he's in you. And everything you need is present right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now listen, you there and you saying, Pastor, I need to be saved. I'm backslidden. I need to, I need to recommit my heart. Oh, Pastor, I just want to join new home. Pastor, I just want to connect with the cyber church community. Community, There's an email address at the bottom of the screen. I want you to email us. And I want you to let us know what your need is. And someone's going to respond to you. And whatever you need, we're going to get you situated. We're going to welcome you into the family of God. And we're going to welcome you into the new home family. Just know we love you. Just know we love you. Now listen, as we prepare, I want us to give a Holy Spirit offering today. As we prepare to honor the Lord in our giving. I've been saying to you for months now to sow a $107 seed. I've been saying to you, sow the $42 seed. But we're going to do it differently today. I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your hearts today. And I want you to give. Now, you know, we had a, a hurricane last week and uh, it, it kind of interfered with our normal schedule of services, which interferes with the finances and all of that kind of thing. Just like normal, you know, we weren't able to, uh, Elder Sid wasn't able to get the thing up, get the board, the Bible studies up. So I need, I need you to make up some financial ground today. Last week, for some reason, we did not have the best financial week. But I'm believing God today that we're going to have record giving today. And I'm, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to um, speak to your hearts. And I want you to obey the Holy Spirit today in your giving. If the Holy Spirit tells you to give a thousand, I want you to do it. Just like some of you gave a thousand dollars to me um, last weekend for my 39th celebration you got to learn how to give like that to your church to your ministry you see yeah don't 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 give more to your pastor than you would to the lord now, you know giving to your pastor for certain blessings to come upon your life but you're supposed to give into your ministry like that as well every week we should we should have any number of you that are sowing a thousand dollar seed because god is blessing you like that all over the nation you're part of this ministry now and i need you to give like it so I want you to look at all of the giving means, all of the electronic means. I want you to follow one of those, whichever one works for you. Givelify, uh, Cash App, Text to Give, website. Those of you that need to mail it, you want to write a check and mail it, we retrieve the mail. I want you to write the check and mail it. But I need you to give today. I need you to give today to sustain the ministry. You've done a wonderful job of it. Ooh, through a pandemic, you have done a wonderful job of it. But I want us to go to the next level now. I want, I want us to go. Those of you that need to tithe, I want you to get your tithe prepared and return the tithe to the Lord. It's the foundation of biblical prosperity. And then I want you to get the seed that the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. Holy Spirit, I thank you now for speaking clearly, 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 clearly. 
clearly to their hearts and making them know your voice, God. And tell them, instruct them to give and let them give according to their obedience to you in Jesus' name. I'm getting ready to leave you, but I want you to continue to give. Obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to make plans to join us next Saturday for our uh, drive-in communion service, combined drive-in communion service. I want you to make plans to be in at 1605 Robert C. Blake Senior Drive at our administrative building's parking lot. Drive-in service. I want you to be there. I want you to be there. And um, something else I wanted to say to you, it slips my mind now, but just know that I love you with all of my heart and I want you to continue to give, continue to give, continue to give. If you're not watching this live, you're watching this later, I want you to give, give, give and obey the Holy Spirit. Give the intentional seed and watch God send an intentional blessing. And know that I love you and I commend you into the hands of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? We are coming out of this. Oh, New Home TV family, I'm sure you guys love that message from our bishop. Listen, right now we want to go ahead and sow in the bishop and show him that we love him. You can do that by going to Cash App, typing in his Cash App, it's RC Blakes, J-R, or his Venmo, RC Blakes. And you can also go to his website, www.rcblakes.com. Show Bishop some love today. Let's be a blessing to him. Until next week, I love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. God bless you.